is what I say. Acting is like dog years, okay? It feels like forever, you know? I don't know, I don't have a dog, so I don't know the age <laughs> thing, but that's how it feels. Seven years, and That's yeah. how, as you years, hear one yeah. note, it feels like 18. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I was experiencing, all of these no's, all of these no's, but then God operates and moves the way he wants to move, mm. y'all, and you really got to get out of the way. Okay, so I don't know if you could tell, but I think they like the movie. <laughs> I, I loved it. it it's, I've loved this property. I've loved this musical since the original Broadway production. I saw you in the 2015 revival. This has meant so much to so many people, and I want to bring it all the way back sort of to the text, Alice Walker's novel, which is so important. Yeah, give it up for uh, Alice Walker's novel. Uh, so important in you know the African American literary canon, the literary canon in general. So I'd love to know for each of you, how did the color purple first come into your life? Did it start with the Broadway production? Did it start with a movie? Did you have a relationship with the novel going into the making this film? Oh man! First of all, hey y'all! <laughs> hey! Oh, it is so good to be here to be with our SAG after community. Um, so our connection to this, for me, there's so many ways in, but today I'm going to start with reading the book, Alice Walker's words. It truly does start with Dear God, the first two words in her book. And for me, you might not know this, but I grew up in church. My mother was a minister. My father was a deacon. Spent 24-8 in church, y'all. And so... <laughs> 24-8. <laughs> and so a lot of the times it felt like as a teenager, 14, 15 years old, that all I had was God and a journal, the same way Celie did. I felt like Celie in so many ways, being dark-skinned, being plus size, having natural hair, feeling unseen. So that's the only two things that I could lean on. And so in 2005, my father took me to see The Color Purple. One, because it was the only black show on Broadway at the time besides The Lion King. <laughs> but it's so, I'm so glad it was, <laughs> even though you know we don't want it that way. But the reason I say that is because seeing so many people look like me on this spiritual journey as a spiritual child growing up in the church, I got to see myself. I got to see where my life could go. There was people, that looked like me and was holding themselves with such a professionalism that I was like, there's an open door here. I don't know how to get there, but I'm gonna find a way. And so I ended up attending Juilliard, studying there. Yes, thank you, Jesus, I made it. <laughs> At 17 years old, which was very trippy coming in that young. Um, and the oldest in my class was 34. Wow. So I'm learning how to, you know, speak and be a woman and like they're teaching you how to walk, how to talk and all these things. And I'm still trying to discover who I was, right? And so I get through that journey, got to do uh, Juilliard with Corey Hawkins, who yes. plays Harpo. Yeah, give it up. Uh, which is also another full circle moment here. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I went out into the world trying to audition and I struggled, y'all. I mean, look, the thing is y'all know this, is what I say, acting is like dog years, okay? It feels like forever, you know? I don't know, I don't have a dog, so I don't know the age <laughs> thing, but that's how it feels. Seven years, and That's yeah. how, as you years, hear one yeah. note, it feels like 18. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I was experiencing, all of these no's, all of these no's, but then God operates and moves the way he wants to move, mm. y'all, and you really got to get out of the way and let him lead the way, because I didn't understand why I was hearing so many no's off Broadway and auditioning for Broadway, but it was because he said, this is ordained for you. So 10 years later, I auditioned for The Color Purple, The Revival, and that was my blessing. God made that a full circle moment for me, and I got to star in that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is so incredible. I, I guess I'll go to Taraji next. I, it's been reported that you actually turned down the role of Shug Avery on Broadway, and now you're, you've played it so beautifully and expertly in the film. Can you talk about, I guess, that sort of full circle moment and why you, know, you said no at that time, but decided to go on this journey for this film? 
Well, um, I always, and I'm glad I'm here with um, thespians here, yeah. my fellow thespians. Yes. Just because, thespians. because my message to you is um, you're going to get told no a lot. I'm sure you know this already. Um, prepare for it so it doesn't surprise you. Okay? Just know. Go into the audition. I'm going to leave my soul in here. I'm going to be told no, but they're going to remember me. And that's how I carried myself this ent my entire career. And, and I'll give you several examples. For this, yes, I was tapped to play her on Broadway. And at the time, I knew, I know my instrument. <laughs> I don't wake up and sing every day. I'm not anointed like this one here. <laughs> Nobody I is. Know, Nobody I know my is. skills. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is like. You know, I ain't got it like this one here. I know my skills set. You know, and so I was like, I don't think. Not that I couldn't play or breathe life into her. I just didn't want to let myself down. Or, or I didn't just believe in myself at the time. But what I did know is that my voice. I know what it takes to for, um to do eight shows a week singing like that. And I just I knew I couldn't do it. So I ran. <laughs> But so what I say when I say show up is that I didn't even know that it's got to start connecting the dots. How I even was even tapped for Sugar on Broadway is because I showed up for Hustle and Flow. And, mm. and yes, um, Stephanie Elaine produced that. Well, Stephanie Elaine is married to Stephen Bray. Stephen Bray, music executive on Broadway and on the movie. Wow. Mm. So the great thing about Destiny and what you're saying, get out of your way. I ran from Shug, but clearly she was meant for me because yes. I had no idea that they were, that it was even this color purple script floating around. I had just done or booked um, uh, the live version of Annie playing Mrs. Hannigan. Yes. So I, oh, I did so that and I was happy. I was like, see, now they know I can sing a little yes, bit. Yes, you were so good at that. <laughs> you were amazing. But thank you. But then I get called. And, and my manager's like, you know you're being tapped for Suge. And I'm like, get out of here. Why the fuck are they doing this movie again? Like, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, why are we? This is a classic. Like, oh, Hollywood gets on my nerves. But then Blitz called. And when he told me about Celie's imagination and, and showing the movie and experiencing all of this trauma and stuff through this childlike, beautiful pure imagination, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got my attention. But then I had to audition. Ooh, how did that go? This Tell is me when about you got to check ego. Now, keep, now, ego's a good thing. You should have it. We have it. It's healthy to have it, but you got to check that all. <laughs> you got to check her. I mean it. No, you know, you have to check your ego. Because if I had let ego run amok, I would have been like, oh, no, if you can't hire me, I would have passed up an incredible moment. And some people did. Oh, uh, yes. And I don't mean that in a personal way. In a bad way, way but, but people do do that. They do that. Mm. And you wonder why. This one is so talented. Why they didn't know? We're trying to give you some insight here. Always show up. Check your ego. You're being tapped for a reason. You might have to go through a hurdle or two. But that makes you hungry. Don't ever get comfortable. Mm. People ask me all the time, you feel like you made it? No. No, I ain't feel. What's your best role? My next one. Yeah. Right. Well, that's it. Words are powerful. Words are very powerful. And not only that, as a human, baby, I'm still growing. I have not even arrived as a human. I'm still learning lessons, falling down and getting up. Mm. Wow. So that's how it came to me. He called and was like, Taranji, you are out <laughs> sugar. And I looked at him like he was crazy. I was like, no. <laughs> I, it couldn't be me. But I'm so grateful that man saw something in me. Mm. I didn't even believe in myself like this. Wow. Like, And then to get with this one, and Lord. she's like, girl, you got it. I was so freaking <laughs> nervous. <laughs> me too. But you know what I <laughs> love? Gotta get into it. <laughs> you know what I love, though? And I'm going to say this for y'all, because you know I'm, I'm a little more seasoned. <laughs> and I've been doing it in two decades. Because you never do yep. But I, I am so happy for you guys. And, and I'm going to say this because when I came to LA, it was one at a time. And if you didn't look a certain way, Hollywood had me thinking I was ugly, y'all. Oh they would say she's crazy. pretty, but she's not Hollywood. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? And so all those years I spent thinking I wasn't pretty. And I look at those pictures now that I'm older and I'm like, oh my God, girl, you were beautiful. How come you couldn't see that? Because you listening to outside sources. 
When I came to Hollywood, it was one at a time. You had to look a certain way. You had to speak a certain way. I was considered too edgy, too black. Mm. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But to sit here and be in the show, in the movie, and I get to support these beautiful women who this is your first major film. I want you I to understand that. how special Woo! this is. You hear what I'm saying? You've been doing this on the stage, off the stage, TV, but this is her first major feature film. Woo! So well, I'm saying this to say, when you see a black woman up here, baby, we jumped hurdles to get here. Wow. We fought all the obstacles. Yes. Getting paid less than. And we do it with grace. We do it with grace because when we speak up too much, we're considered angry. I'm trying to give you lessons here. Mm. I didn't want to get emotional like this, God damn it. Oh my God. But I want these two beautiful women to be proud and I want you to hold on to this moment because oftentimes when black people get to tell our stories, we are tampered with. They don't let us tell the stories. They come in and they interject and it's like, but that's not our culture. So I'm telling you this, this is, not, this is rare, baby. I'm hoping that this work that we're doing is going to change things. But I'm just so happy to be alive to see that all the fighting and, and fussing and crying is paying off. Yeah. It's paying wow. off. Oscar, you said it. Oscar, you said it. I want Oscar. you guys to hold on. Woo. Wow. Taraji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was so powerful and so important. And what you said about you know being told that you're not beautiful and having to find and discover that for yourself so perfectly dovetails with Celie's story and Celie's journey in this film. And I mean, this is surreal for me. I remember it, calling it every week for you on American Idol. So this is literally the most surreal thing. Um, I can't even like believe that I'm sitting here with you. But as as the the star who's been a part of this project for the longest, right? Because you you came to this role in 2006. Can you talk about how you've grown alongside Celie, whether your approach to the role has changed in the last, you know, 15, 16 years? Well, I, first of all, I said I was not going to cry. I think I'm dehydrated at this point. <laughs> water, we have water. Oh, you, like, yeah, I might need some of that. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I had never seen a Broadway show in my life. Music was, was, was my thing. Wow. And so when they invited me to see it and I would be in New York and I would ride by and I would be like, I want to go see the color purple. I grew up watching the movie mm. and Whoopi was very special to me because she was the first black broad. Mm. And I was like, we got a lot in common. <laughs> And um, they asked me to come see the Broadway play. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. They want me to come. And I sat back and I was thinking, whoa, like, how do they do this? Mm. Magical. Every night the stage was moving and curtains was moving. <laughs> and then after they took me out to eat, now I'm thinking, what is really going on? <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. You didn't know. Okay. And so Scott was like, I want you to be my Celia. And I'm like, you got the wrong one. <laughs> Because I've never done anything like this. Why me? I think Scott had been following my story and he knew a lot of things that I had went through in my personal life because mm -hmm. I spoke about it. Mm -hmm. Very open. I tell my t my test because it's my testimony and it blesses somebody else. Mm. Yes. So I did it. I jumped in there. And after I said I would never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious. <laughs> I was in every interview, and it was. I said, nope, no more ceiling for me, thanks, but no thanks. Because at the time, my life was in shambles, so I was carrying my cross and her cross. Mm. Wow. And that was heavy. And then, like T said, singing like that every night, I ended up with tumors on my vocal cords. No, no, it's... Mm. So when I walked away, I walked away. And Scott called, and he says, I know you're happy, you're married, you're looking good. <laughs> I'm up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to get up. I was about to do a whole spin. Up. <laughs> do it, do it. Do it, do it, baby. No. <laughs> but I, I, he 
said, I need you to be my Sealy again. And I was like, oh, Scott. <laughs> Didn't you see the interviews? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no. He says, you, you got to. And, and we, I had to audition. We all had to audition even after saying yes. Wow. So I, we all were kind of like, wait, is this a trick? Like, what are we doing? You call and ask me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I spoke with my husband and I spoke with my mother and then I spoke with God. And I was like, Lord, why are they calling me? Because it's easy for you to go back into that thing of, I don't want to be told that I'm ugly every day. I'm out of that. I don't want to, to go back and relive my past that I've walked away from. But see, what it was was I walked away from it, but I didn't truly heal from it. So this time, playing Seeley, I healed from it. Wow, I'm so happy. I got to tell you, yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to do my own stunts. Really? Yep. Oh, wow. How and Coleman that... was pissed. Coleman was like, nope, she can't do it. Don't let her, don't let her. And I was like, Coleman, I have to. So he pulled me to the side and he says, why do you want to do this? And I said, because this is my way of letting go. Mm. Let me do it. He said, you promise you're not going to get hurt. I said, I may get a couple of scratches and bruises, but I'm a tough cookie, baby. I'm Seely. Mm. Let's do this. Wow. So it was this time I seen something different that I didn't get to see when I played her the first time, mm -hmm. she was really a bad mama jamma. She <laughs> held everybody down. She was quiet, but she was watching. Yeah. And when she said something, even when she said the smallest things, it was powerful. Mm. So I know now that I am Seely. I'm a cancer. Seely's a cancer. Cancers like to take care of everybody. <laughs> and I took care of Suge, and I went to go check on Sophia. So <laughs> Yes, you did. <laughs> so I'm glad that I came back, and I hope that it heals not only black women, all women, mm. men, young and old, because everybody in this place can relate to somebody in this movie. Yeah, that is so true. It's not just a black thing. It's a world thing. Mm. So I feel like the color purple is going to bring healing to the world. And with, right now, with everything that's going on, we need it. Now more than ever. Right. I just wow. want to... I, I just want to point yeah, one please. thing out, because I, I remember sitting in those seats having so many questions. When she say we had to audition, see, sometimes in the industry, the, the, you can be the director's choice, yeah. but you got to prove it to the studios. Mm. See? So we were actually handpicked by Blitz, but Blitz had to fight for us because we were the underdogs. Mm. We really I promise were. you, wow. if you knew some of the names that were floating around, mm, which, you know, no, we're not here to be messy. No, we're really trying to scoop you to keep you the game. Really like, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, Taraji. Yeah. That's yeah. Not, not a messy thing. That is not And it seems like it happens to all films. This is what we're trying to tell you because you go out there with all these big dreams and I just want to give you some truth so that you're not let down. You know what That's I mean? Super. Yes, we love the talent. Talent is great. Talent will withstand you, but it's literally politicking and business. Yeah. Tell, tell no, them. it's yeah. really what you said, and and that's why you have to do your own race. You can't worry about the person to the left or the right of you, and you really have to trust the process, because sometimes what you imagine for yourself is so small compared to what God has for you. Mm, do you is... see what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like all of those things that I went through, all of those no's in this industry, I didn't understand. And he was like, I'm trying to position you for this color purple. I didn't know there was going to be a movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then all of the all of the doubt for myself started to creep in too, right? Because for me, I was being blessed so fast. I'm getting Tony nominated. I got a Grammy off, off the cast mm -hmm. album. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, how is this happening, God? Because these people told me no, and I don't understand all of the rejection. You know, I don't understand it. And sometimes it's not for you to understand mm -hmm. <laughs> because God's purpose is always greater. But like you said, we had to audition. My audition process was a six month process. Wow. Even after um, getting a Grammy from this, mm -hmm. um, the first thing they wanted me to do was sing. And I'm like, y'all, I just did that. I just did this on Broadway. Um, eight shows a like, week. Ain't nothing gonna... happened different here. <laughs> if anything, it's stronger. What is going on here? Yeah. Um, but you, I had to walk with humility. And I had to, like Taraji said, get the ego out of the way. Because this thing is bigger than me. 
And so I'm so grateful I did. I even had to do a chemistry read with Corey. Um, and she went to school? And I yeah, went to school. I've known him so since great. I was You've 17, y'all. That's, yeah. that's my, like, come on. <laughs> but you have to let the ego get out of the way. And here we are getting to have this experience with the Taraji P. Henson, mm. with mm. Fantasia Barino. Mm. You know, God really knows what he's doing. That's all I really got to say. Come on, we preach. preaching now, so we're yeah. going to leave a bucket in the bag. Y'all can lay some money in it. And you know, all you got to leave in the bucket is love. Just we don't love. want no money. But I'm going to say this, too. I'll take some money. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. Me, too. <laughs> I'm going to say this, straight, too, because yeah. we used to have great conversations on set. Like, this is what we used to do on set. Uh, we would go out to eat and we would talk. And I want to say this to add on top of that cake they just baked. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also we just have to trust God and say, I don't want to focus. If you get caught up in like the awards and the accolades, mm -hmm. you so miss God. And that's what I love about what she said to me when we were walking in the field. You can miss the small things. Mm -hmm. Like when I lost everything twice, I started to have to realize that is there, what is in the house? What is in the car? What is in the awards? What does it gain me to, to, to gain the world but lose my soul? What is it for me to, so I had to start looking at the small things and waking up every day and realizing my children are healthy. I'm healthy. There were certain situations that I went through. My little brother almost lost his life. I have a best friend here with me right now who just lost his mother from cancer. Right. And so we sit and we have conversations and say, do you think she would have done things different? She probably wouldn't have worried about certain things she worried about. She probably would have. You, you get what I'm saying? I just want to say to everybody in this room, we're still here. Yeah. Uh. That's bigger than any award. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are the award, baby. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm sitting with real live walking Oscars. And you want to, yeah. baby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wow. Uh, unbelievable. I that uh, so so powerful and so amazing and I'm so happy that you said I'm still here because the music, I mean that is the eleven o'clock number that I'm not a dry eye in the house every time that you hear it, every time that you sing it. Um can you talk a little bit all three of you about sort of the music and the recording process and also the choreography was so impressive and you guys have to learn some eight counts. You're you don't know, learn how to uh, tap dance. Tap I was blown dance. away. I was like, girl, I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Call me tomorrow, girl, I'm going home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard. It was really hard. And my feet was hurting so bad. But I did it for Celie because she got to move her feet. She got to move quick. She got the she got the smile. She got the dance. Like she went from being broken and everything taken away from her and not feeling like she was seen. So that was the moment. Like she got to stand up on the thing and tap in some red sequins pants. 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 So that was fun for me. But the dancing was was it hard for y'all? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Look, people like to say I'm a triple threat because I've been on Broadway doing musical. No, I'm not, okay? <laughs> My gift is in singing and acting, but the dancing <laughs> is like, Lord, take the third, take the wheel. <laughs> but, but the, and I say this because uh, Miss uh, Fatima Robinson, the yes. incredible Fatima Robinson, challenged this young man to pick my 200 plus butt up <laughs> in the air over and over and over in that tap dance and I'm, I was so scared but I just want to give it up to all of the uh, dancers too mm -hmm. yeah. for you know what they did and what they brought and the characters that they were but I just into that young man for holding me up because he was probably 120 pounds wet y'all <laughs> But even just like giving the dancers their love, because you know, we were all intimidated. I don't consider myself a dancer. I think we're mover wellers. Yes. Mm, mover. Yeah. Yeah. Mover, mover wellers. wellers. Yeah. We know yeah. an eight count. Yeah. We know yeah. an eight count, right? <laughs> but I just gotta give it up to the dancers because you know, you know, all my career, they never get the praises and they they are the the backbone yeah. to any production. You understand? Extras, same thing. Whenever I'm on a set with extras, you're gonna eat good, baby. <laughs> You know, cause, cause I don't like people being overlooked, and I'm a huge. I go to war for my crew. You know, cause it, it takes a village. It's not just us. We can't just show up and make this happen. Mm -hmm. So whenever you show up to, uh, um, to to set, always consider your crew. Always treat them with respect, and see them, cause all humans want to be seen. Yeah. 
Wow. And and the mic, the boom man doesn't want to hold a mic for 18 hours while you try to squeak out a tear. So show up, <laughs> show up prepared. <laughs> show up prepared. Prepared preparation. Oh, no, that you is... asked about the music. No, but and the music too. If you okay. know, please tell me about well, recording the music. I... I'll just say the needless to say, I was intimidated, but I got so much encouragement. But for me, the music told a lot about who Suge was. Mm. Um, the fact that, you know, because you can take her for face value. She's a loose woman, this and that. But you got to go deeper when you're playing humans. Because there's always a why. There's always a reason. And her father shunned her because she chose to live a secular life. But what was beautiful about her and where I found the most sacred, beautiful places in her is her connection to God. Mm. She's the one telling Celia about God when she lost faith. You know, and the fact that um, she sings jazz. Mm -hmm. She sings gospel. She sings the blues. The jazz is where I found the pocket for her because jazz is spontaneous. It's improvisational. That's how she is. She shows up. You don't know when she coming. Hey, I was here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. She just, you know, she you don't. She go. She just, she's unapologetically herself. She was the first bad B I T C H. Mm. You know, back in the twenties when women couldn't speak up for themselves, she fought against it. She she resisted anybody projecting onto her. And I thought that she was, you know, they say all heroes don't wear capes. Mm -hmm. But when she shows up to the house, the interesting thing is she has children with this man, mister. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and she doesn't, every, everybody's not meant to be parents. And this woman is raising her kids. <laughs> There's guilt there. Um, but she sees her in a way that all those men she ran to didn't see. She sees her in a way she, she can't even see herself. Same for Celie. This beautiful woman who she just, oh, God, I wish and dreaming about, sees her, really sees her, and, and takes this diamond in the rough and just give her a little nurturing and look at how she shines. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't take nothing from this movie, ladies, you need your sister circle. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You got it. And, it. and we were just talking out there. It ain't got to be big. It don't have to be tons and tons. But they got to feel, they got to know that. By the way you say hello, something's off. And they wow. got to pull up. Mm. Right? Mm. And men, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> we yes, love you, men. This, we ain't bashing you, but I'm going to tell you what. If the ladies are all right, y'all going to be just fine. Mm. Wow. You feel me? Absolutely. Get wow. just get, Keep your lady circles, love and feed and nurture them. I, I, wow. This has been, this is so amazing. And I, I could literally sit here for the rest of time and talk <laughs> to all of you. But I think we only have time for sort of one final question. And I, I just want to thank you all for doing this. This is absolutely incredible. Um, and I guess sort of <laughs> to sort of uh, piggyback off of what Taraji just said, what do you hope that people take away from this film at this time? Because it feels so important that it's happening right now. And your, your sisterhood, your relationship, it's so, I can feel it. It's so strong, the bonds that you've created on this film. So I guess, yeah, what do you hope people take away from it? And what did you all take away from making this film? I don't hope it. I know it. People will be healed. Mm. Because I told you I was. Yeah. So people will be healed. Families will mend. A mother will talk to a daughter, and she ain't talked to her a long time. A father will talk to a son. You know, it's always that one auntie or uncle you ain't talked to, you mad at, yes. something happening, right? <laughs> It's going to make you leave and say, you know what? I forgive you. I love you. I need you. You need me. So I believe that people will be healed because I was. Wow. I think for me, it's just um, like Sophia. The strongest bird can also fall. Yeah. And just remembering that you can get back up. Like Fantasia is mentioning, there's a lot of people hurting right now, you know, and sometimes it's important to get things off of yourself and to um, just think of others. There's people that are losing people and thinking of committing suicide or who just lost their chi child. Um, there's a lot of people hurting. So if you can be that piece of purple, you know, mm. um, if you can be that little light for somebody else, please be that. That's what I, I would like, love to say. And then also, it's a for me, 
I just want to speak to the little black girls out there that there is a space for you out here. Um, you know, Taraji talks about being the only one. I felt like that when I first entered into this industry as well. I didn't know how to do my hair. I knew that, you know, I, I didn't know how to do it in the sense of do I go straight? Do I stay curly? You know, I was dark skinned. I knew I couldn't change that. Do I lose weight? Do I get bigger so I can be the funny black woman? I didn't know what to do. But then Orange is the New Black came around and it showed me that there is space for all of us. There was Uzo, there was Adrian, Samira, myself, the Hispanic girls, the white girls, all of us in that space. And it told me you can have sisterhood, you can have a space, but also just being in this room and knowing like there's somebody that's gonna relate to Taraji and Fantasia and myself, just keep going even if it feels like you are the only one or, or, or the world, this industry makes you feel that you're replaceable, you'll find your space. And don't be intimidated by seeing other people that look like you in that room. Oh, That's yeah. all I wanna I like say. That, I like There's that, a space like for you. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Don't forget to drop the money in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's what this is. This is a, a spiritual thing. And I think it's so crazy how God works. I mean, I just think about our journeys. You know, to be honest, like you said, this is my first studio film, right? I've done a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of independence. But I don't think God made any mistake putting me in such a spiritual story to ground me during this moment. I am so grateful for, you know, what this is about to be for us, but also for myself. And sometimes that can get intimidating. You can feel like, God, I'm not ready, but I am ready. Oh and every yeah. day I'm ready. And But sometimes you can feel that way, right? So I feel like I'm just grateful to the universe, to the spirit for putting me in this story. Because everybody does not have this story. You can't do this with Barbie, y'all. Okay? <laughs> that is true. So, that so is true. I'm grateful for but that. I'm, that's why I want you to hold on to this baby because these moments are very rare. They don't happen often. You understand? And that's why you got a sister circle. Because, baby, I'm going to hear, I'm going to be in your ear like it's your time. Every time you second guess yourself, I'm going to be right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got me right there cuz you be you been you belong here baby you are here honey you are here yes ma'am she killed that i, I want to don't do it she don't you do it killed it she killed it killed it, killed it. every unbelievable oh my gosh well i this has been such a joy such a blessing uh, please join me one more time in giving it up for the stars of The Color Purple, Danielle Brooks, Taraji P. Henson, and Fantasia Perino.